Hooray! Time for another monitor video, and I know how much you guys love monitor videos. Yeah, at some point in time, as a young child, most of us played with a spirograph. We were always had a deep intrigue for the spirograph. So what is a spirograph? What is a hypertrochoid? It's an interlacing, divergent sphere, except it's only shown in 2D. So our minds need to wrap ourselves around what is happening on polarization. Since we know magnetism is radiation, is divergent dielectric discharge, the dielectric field, quote unquote, by Faraday. So what is a hypertrochoid pattern? Here is a picture I took a couple nights ago. You can see uh, this is a very large ring magnet. Here we have our uh, centripetal convergent. The black line is, of course, the uh, the ring. And out here we have another hypertrochoid pattern of our centrifugal divergence. But even with the great the holographic-like 3D depth of field that you see on a ferro cell, you're still only seeing, yeah, let's call it 2.5 dimensions. And you can see some depth at an angle. So what is happening in a hypertrochoid pattern? We know that we're getting centrifugal divergence along the outer edge of our magnet centrifugal divergence and is reciprocating returning to the other side if this were the other side and returning centripetally. So how do we get this pattern? Well simple platonic logic and especially Euclidean geometry because if you can't model it with Euclidean geometry then it isn't natural. Complex math and algebra is necessary for complex interactions but the very most simple things in nature can be solved with very simplex Euclidean geometry and I assure you simple magnetodielectric field conjugation in a quote-unquote magnet which is a dielectric object this can be very easily modeled using Euclidean geometry now before getting to that proof and proving my ten-year-old theory that I uh, I copyrighted one over five to the power of negative three and uh, a discovery I made in Plato's Republic 509D to 511 that dates all the way back to Pythagoras because even though Plato recorded it doesn't mean it originally belonged to Plato. We have to ask ourselves what is spin, what is the vortex? How are we getting a divergent radiation? Remember we also have to take into account a gyromagnetic, gyromagnetic precession, obviously. Here's a uh, picture taken by Michael Snyder in Louisville using an extremely large uh, ferrocell uh, ring, uh, ring magnet. So, here we see our centrifugal divergence and our centripetal convergence. We're able to dilate the centripetal and uh, eliminate, able to see both separately by using a large ring magnet. But I can assure you can actually see this on a non-ring magnet you just don't get as much dilation so you're able to see both clearly. So why is this not expansion? Well this is rotation. This is not movement, this is rotation like in a nucleus. Well you're thinking well one side's moving clockwise the other side's moving counterclockwise so they're both moving in the opposite direction. Well this is rotation. We have both divergence and gyromagnetic spin. Gyromagnetic ratio. You can only move this way. Well, you're thinking, well, you're moving your right hand clockwise, and we look over here, you're moving your left hand clockwise. Well, let's look at both at the same time. This is the only way radiative divergence can exist. Not only do we have this in divergence, but we have gyromagnetic spin. Because obviously, trillions and trillions of atoms in any magnet, quote unquote, acting coherently, the incommensurate magnetodielectric geometry, double hyperbola, accretion disk, focused at, concentrated at the midpoint of the physical magnet. This is the only type of con divergence that can exist. Obviously, you can't see my hands very well. Yes, I have a magnet tattooed on my hands. I'm glad you noticed that. I also have my formula from 11 years ago, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. More important than my discovery of how magnets actually work. Believe it or not, I've got 
almost 400 pages written about that one discovery alone, which actually all led to this starting uh, 11 years ago. I proved the theorem uh, a couple nights ago, my uh, two theorems. Anyway, let's look at divergence. It can only occur this way. And including gyromagnetic precession. This is incommensurability. This is divergence. So, what are we referring to? Now, obviously, we're only looking at centrifugal divergence here and not centripetal convergence. Just imagine we're only looking at the centripetal, centrifugal divergence. This is the same hypertrochoid pattern that we see on our ferro cell, except you're only seeing centrifugal divergence off of both sides. Obviously, not both. Simple enough. Let's see, what does that look like? Hmm, kind of looks like that. Yes, that's right. Now we know what's happening, or at least you're starting to get a clue of what's happening. So where's the math for it? Where's the formula for it? Well, I've got it, I can assure you. It's been proofed. I had the, uh, I had the math before I had the final proof, but before we get to that, let's take a look at what is happening on our magnet. We're only looking at one side. Here we have our facing side of our magnet. Black line here. Now you see, opposite side divergent centrifugal so we take a look at our red arrows if you actually trace any red arrow you will see it comes around you have to imagine this in 3d and then centripetal convergence here same thing all around black line centripetal convergence on facing side red line ultimately the red and the black connect as you can obviously see Red all the way around to black, centripetal convergence. Red is divergent centrifugal from the other side. Just imagine this, an incredibly thin disk magnet. Centrifugal divergence from the other side to centripetal convergence here. We're only looking at one modality of divergence. Obviously making it more complicated than this, you wouldn't understand it. So right now we're only looking at one side's centrifugal divergence and it's starting to re-enter at centripetal convergence. So, we obviously were not showing this facing side doing the same thing in interlacing. Understood? Red side is opposite side convergence. We're turning around. Yes, this is where our hypertrochoid pattern comes from. We all marveled as kids, you know, at the looking at the spirograph. Well, look at the pretty little picture as well. You know, that, that, that doesn't mean anything. This is our facing magnet. This is actually our dielectric boundary, which is also the boundary of our physical magnet, and our centripetal convergence point at the surface. But this is also incommensurability. Now, is the green the centripetal surface boundary? or centripetal convergence zone and physical magnet, and the blue is the opposite side divergent facing side convergence. Or is the blue the centripetal convergence zone and the green the centripetal surface boundary? Well, without the third element, you cannot tell. It's impossible to tell this. Without a third element to show what side is what and what is converging and what is diverging you cannot tell from this that is another point of incommensurability that is where the golden ratio comes in i wasn't trying to plug the golden ratio into the explanation of magnetism it exists there naturally this is the only way it can exist because i certainly did not create any of these images and the only way to mathematically explain these, and I'll show you in a second with the formula, the hypertrochoid patterns of divergence, of convergence, which models perfectly. Now, I didn't model these just freehand. I used a simple program, but I used my formula here, these two, and this formula, this formula, these two circles, they both exist at golden ratio sections. Okay? So, this is modeled after the formula. Yeah, this might be a little bit boring, but we'll get to the 
quote unquote good part here in a second. Now it took me, I discovered 10 years ago <clears throat> incommensurability and that by the way, if you want to know what the Grand Unified Theory is, this is it. This is what is tattooed on my hand. If I live to be 200 years old and make a thousand more discoveries, and boy, I've been making a whole lot of them lately. Here's the Grand Unified Theory, if you ever wanted to know what it was. What, what it is, it is 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3. All field ether modalities, divergence, convergence, growth, what you see in a sunflower, everything has to do with harmony, beauty, in nature, all boils down to this one formula. And I found it secretly hidden, and I wrote an article about it 11 years ago. Found it hidden in some ancient Pythagorean writings, but it was so obscurely written that, uh, you know, it took a lot of wit, let's just say, to uncover that. But anyway, that's the uh, Grand Unified Theory, in case you wanted to know, and most people actually would like to know that. So, let's take a look at what was proven last night. Here, let's take a look at a precision disc magnet. No, it's not a speaker magnet. It looks like that. But anyway, as you can see here, we have a uh, sphere magnet inside our uh, inside our uh, our large ring magnet. And here we have a cylinder magnet inside our large same ring magnet. And a different identical ring magnet with a cube in the center. But, as will turn out to be the case, proving my formula... They will all look identical, including two larger spheres. I didn't show you the larger sphere. What we have here is a perfect incommensurable ratio of phi, 1 over phi, and remaining of 1 over phi to the power of a negative 2. 0 0.381966, etc., etc., etc. Which is right here in our C1 circle, proving my formula accurate. The formula is right up here in light blue. I've got a link for it if you need it. Now the golden angle of uh, growth and of divergence is 137.5077231 etc. The golden angle of 1 which must enter in or a phi to the power of negative 2 is 0.381966. I don't want to bore you with the details but this is the formula that's been proven. It's proven two nights ago by me. This modeled magnetism perfectly. Now this obviously there's uh, about 24 factors that affect uh, field divergence and convergence, how it's made, etc., etc. So nothing's perfect, like the large 6-inch neodymium iron boron will affect a, a CRT tube at 14 feet away. But this is, not this image, but this is mean field divergence. In other words, obviously there is divergent magnetic radiation far beyond this boundary, but this is the mean divergence given a perfect magnet, perfect ideal conditions, this is the model. So, and let's get our formula out of the way. Yes, it took me four years to come up with this formula. Combine the 108-36-36, we'll talk about that in a second. Anyway, this was proven last night, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 2, and 1 over phi with a remainder of phi. It doesn't matter whether I use a cube magnet, a cylinder magnet, or a sphere magnet. We have incommensurability in field divergence and convergence through reciprocation can only occur at golden ratio angles. That's correct. You find the golden ratio in everything in nature. If you thought you wouldn't, if you thought you were not going to find it in the most simplex absolute simplex things, being centrifugal and centripetal magnetic field reciprocations, obviously you're deluded. If you're going to find it anywhere in perfection, it's going to be in magnetodielectric coherency in the quote-unquote magnet. Field incommensurability follows necessitatively Greek anakie, absolutely, as the Russians would say. This also was proven a, a couple nights ago. This is the proof of what took me four years to actually uh, actually uh, come to this uh, combination, uh, uniting the 137, 507, 20, 21, 246, and 21, 246 with 108, 36, 36, in a perfect circle where you end up with 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1 plus 2.3606, uh, which is 1 plus uh, 5 to the power of negative 3. This is a perfect incommensurability between harmony, magnetic reciprocation, and divergence, which is the 137, 5077 angle. 
Now, I have hundreds of pages written about this. I'm certainly not going to get into it without literally putting you to sleep. But this is the discovery I uh, made back in uh, June, I believe. Late June. I got the hints of it, and I finally proved it. Which ties in with our formula over here. You can see the exact same thing over here. 1375077 right here. All you have to do is just turn this vertically, and you will see... 137.507 here in red and in orange. Let me zoom in just a little bit. This is what took me four years to prove. And not only did I prove it, I validated it. This is incommensurability uniting the three absolutes of harmonic incommensurability. One, no new age tinfoil hat nonsense. This is Pythagorean logic. I've proved it by magnetic reciprocation, both divergently and convergently. The 108-36-36, and it looks like a Pythagorean pentagram upside down, but it's not. You'll actually notice the base is wider here. This is 1.23606. The other angles here are 1. This is also an incommensurability. That is why the circumference is 5.23606, or phi cubed plus 1. 4.23606 plus 1. Um, I could literally write another 200 pages about the implications of this and endless, endless diagrams, pictures, spirals, shells, anything you could possibly imagine just based upon this discovery alone. I mean, I, I could never even begin to tell you, not my feeling, my belief, or my conviction, but, you know, this has been proven uh, in magnetic reciprocation, and I've been working on this for four years, and I assure you, I don't not waste my time on stuff that I know has a dead end to it. So, I mean, I didn't permanently tattoo for the rest of my life, uh, you know, the Grand Unified Theory on my wrist, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3 for no reason, without absolute 100% certainty. Nor did I, nor was I chess champion in high school and college by being a dimwit either. So, not that I'm trying to impress anybody, although it certainly sounded like that. Now that we've looked at that, let's take a look at the proof from a few days ago. You can actually see the lobe patterns here. Let me shrink it down a little bit for you and zoom out to back where I was. You can see that I proofed that in centripetal convergence by bringing the centripetal out using an extremely large ring magnet and using another, that my theorem is proofed, which is phi cubed plus 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1 plus phi to the power of negative 3, which is 0 0.23606, or phi to the power of negative 3 plus 1, which is 1.23606, the total of which is 5 plus phi to the power of negative 3, or phi cubed plus 1. So, you can see our three lo our five lobe patterns here. This is the only way centripetal, centripetal and, yeah, I should stop making these videos at 6 o'clock in the morning. The only way centripetal and centrifugal divergence can exist and reciprocate Given divergent magnetic radiation from dielectric discharge, that is what magnetism is, kitties, okay? As I've stated in the other video, we'll make more videos on that, there is no such thing as magnetic attraction. Now, don't repeat that to anybody or they'll call you insane. Well, you know, magnets pick up iron filings, so you're just full of it, you know? We've had 10,000 10, years of people talking about magnets and magnetic attraction, so you're just crazy. That's just crazy. Well, it doesn't work that way. It's dielectric avoidance and counter-avoidance. Magnetism is not driving the magnetism in a magnet, okay? It's only called a magnet for a reason, because lodestones would attract little iron dust, and so we have it deeply ingrained, as deeply ingrained in the human consciousness of magnetic attraction as sex and beauty and harmony. I mean, absolutely, it is so insanely ingrained in the human consciousness from the day we were born, the notion of attraction. Physical attraction, magnetic attraction, animal attraction, something attracting another thing. And oh my God, what's the perfect inanimate object of attraction? Well, it is a magnet. So yes, there obviously is magnetic attraction. Well, I'll assure you, kitties, I will prove it to you beyond any shadow of a doubt. Just don't repeat it to anybody else without letting them read the book. There's so much to add to the, the third edition. It's absolutely mind-boggling. I mean, just enormous amounts of biological experiments and other things, that some of which have actually blown my mind. Anyway, 
So, here we have our 5 plus 5 to the, uh, 5 plus 5 to the power of negative 3.23606, or 5.23606. I've proven incommensurability via my formula that I've been working on for four years now. Uh, discovery of 10 years ago. Here we see our hypertrochoid pattern. And hopefully now you understand what is going on. We all played, most of us did when we were young with a, with a spirograph. Of course, here we see our centrifugal divergence. Remember, even in a ferrocell, and I have other methods, a ferrocell is not the only testing method I'm using. I'm using CRT tubes. I'm using a special invention that I made. It's a nanoparticle suspension that actually shows the uh, tornadic vortexes when you place that over the centripetal point of a powerful neodymium or like a, a samarium cobalt magnet or even a ferrite magnet, but although not as quick. Gives you a nice uh, 25 second display. I hope to possibly get it patented, but I mean, it's just amazing. You have a tornado in a bottle. It's my own invention. Nobody's, uh, only about four or five people have seen it before. So, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. I'm so, so glad I invented it. Uh, here's my other proof of field reciprocation by using two magnets. Proven that regardless of the magnet, whether it's cube, sphere, cylinder, or what it is, I must get necessitatively 1 over 5 to the power of negative 2, 1 over 5, 1 over 5, and phi. The golden ratio section in perfect incommensurability, proving magnetic reciprocation centrifugally and uh, centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. I know, I mean, I could literally talk for hours on this, but I, of course, put you to sleep doing so. But, I mean, taking a look at our hypertrochoid pattern on our uh, magnet, and here's the... Uh, Michael's uh, image, you can see his hand here in the background, you can see his hand holding the ring magnet, this is the centripetal, this is the physical ring, the black ring, you and you I see the centrifugal divergence around that, another larger hypertrochoid, or some people call it a spirograph pattern, but what is happening, like I said, you, only looking at one side of uh, centrifugal divergence here, you see our red side, if you trace it around, our red side of divergence from one side is reciprocating around. You have to imagine this in 3D, just like our magnets. Quote unquote magnets. Just imagine a very thin disk magnet right here looking at you edge on. We also have gyromagnetic precession, but that's kind of complicated to model with my pathetic little human hands, but let's just model the divergence. This is the only way divergent radiation can exist, which is what magnetism is. It is a discharge of dielectric charge. All charge necessitates discharge. There's no such thing as a negative charge in the universe. Mother Nature said if you show her a negative discharge, she'll show you hot ice. I mean, it's, uh, it's an insane statement. There's charge and there's discharge. Convergence, divergence, centripetal, centrifugal. That's the way nature works. She doesn't work using math, but she does have plenty of math in her by field conjugation. And they all work on imperfect situations, golden ratio, and the most simple thing, if you thought a sunflower had beautiful, uh, beautiful geometry, and that you probably noticed the hypertrochoid pattern in a sunflower, correct? I assume that you have. Anyway, it's the same hypertrochoid pattern in a sunflower. Also, I'd also been wondering my entire life about the sand dollar. I always thought the sand dollar was one of the most uh, beautiful objects out there. And I always wondered why. I should have brought it to you in the other house there. Uh, the other room, excuse me. But I'd always wondered why a sand dollar had this particular image on the bottom of it. And as it turns out, and I have a really fast internet connection too, and yet it's still not coming up. There we go, it's close enough. Well, kind of close enough. See, I wasn't prepared. I was, like I said, I need to stop making videos at 5 o'clock in the morning. Or actually, it's 7 o'clock in the morning now. Remember where I was uh, showing you a pattern that uh, 1 equals 85 degrees? Correct? Remember that? I will actually show it to you here in a second, hopefully. Here we go. You see down here, you see this pattern of 85 degrees, and you see here there are two purple triangles with points right here at 137 degrees. So you see both 
triangles here. This is 137.5077 degrees. All you have to do is just do a Google search on 137.5077 degrees and you will get it. Just type in 137.5077 degrees and golden ratio. And you see it's 85 degrees. That always equals 1 in incommensurability. So, I always wonder, well, why is a sand dollar shaped like this? Well, if you actually turn it over, you will see you'll see the whole pattern. It looks different on the other side, obviously. Here we have our perfect 85 degrees. On the other side, you'll see a pattern. If you draw a line from here to the center of the sand dollar, down to here, and then you connect it right here, same over here, this is the pattern of growth. Here we have a 137.5077, 21.246 at base angles. Same on this side. And ta-da, here we have our 85 degrees. So, 20 years ago, if someone had told me, all you have to do is follow the pattern of a sand dollar, you'll see field incommensurability, and you won't have to spend 10 years working on a proof of uniting the 137.5077 and the 108.36 and the 85 equaling 1 in perfect circular. A circular had to be in a circle, of course. That's the only way it could work, because centrifugal and centripetal divergence in a hypotrochoid pattern must be put into a circle in absolute. In other words, every one of these angles of the three types of triangles must be in perfect incommensurability with each and every one of each other. And the only way it could exist, so it took me four years to come up with this model, model was like this. Now I've proven it with magnetic reciprocation. This formula is proved. I proved it physically already. And I always wondered, because I always loved sand dollars, I discovered this a few months ago, and I was just looking at one because my other house is uh, down near Sanibel, uh, Sanibel Island, Florida. And I was uh, looking, I was like, well, you know, my goodness, there's the 85, and there's the 137.5077 in perfection. Right there. That's it. All this time, I think Victor Schauberger had said that, well, he didn't actually say it like this, but he said... Basically, Mother Nature is, uh, you know, basically slapping you in the face, but you aren't listening. Now, here's the other side of a sand dollar. Now, it's at an angle, but if you could see, we draw right up here to the center point to here and draw back up again. That's our 137.5077 and 21.246, and here's our base angle of 85, which equals 1. And if you include the three Pythagorean incommensurables, which necessitatively must equal magnetic field reciprocation, which will literally take me 200 pages and endless thousands of hours to describe to you, but to put it in a five-second nutshell, which is basically impossible, the only way magnetic field divergence and convergence can exist is this model, which I proved back in June that I've been working on for four years. It looks complicated. It looks obtuse. That's correct. And you'll notice, like I said, the base angle here is 1.23606, and all these base angles are 1. This is the only way to unite those. My theory is proven. I've proven it by formula. I've proven it in physical model. It's done. Magnetism is proven. I can demonstrate every aspect of how a magnet works. It is over. Now, the only problem remaining is I have massive amounts of experiments and stuff to add, and basically a hundred more videos. I'll try to make it more professional than a monitor view like this, but it's kind of hard to demonstrate all this stuff without using a monitor sometimes. So It's about the information, not about the professionality of the video. I'd rather watch a professional crummy video than a, uh, a, uh, a, uh, uh, than a uh, well-made uh, video that's full of lies and nonsense. Anyway, thanks for watching. I just want to say that I've proven it, and it's over with now. It's proven. See you later.